Welcome to the Sweetwaters Church podcast. We're a church that loves and serves God passionately and loves people unconditionally. We pray that as you listen to the sermon, your faith will be stirred and you will discover Jesus in a deeper way. For more information about Sweetwaters Church, please visit our website at www.sweetwaterschurch.co.za. Now, let's listen to the latest sermon from our lead pastor, Pastor Kali. This morning we are continuing with our brand new spanking series, our sermon series called Messy Church. And so we're going to go into our scripture straight away and um, we know this scripture quite well. We know the story quite well. It's been preached over and over again, but there's some dynamics that I feel we need to touch on regards to this particular illustration and story that Jesus tells. And it's found in Luke 15 and This morning, there will be scripture on the screen, but I would encourage you to bring your Bibles and bring your notebooks and, you know, take some notes down. But we're going to go into Luke 15, verse 11, carrying on from there, and it's the, you know, the story of the prodigal son. And at verse 11, it continues to say, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to citizens of that country who sent him to his field and feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hard servants have food to spare? And here I'm starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called out one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied. And your father has killed the fattened calf because he he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Verse 31, My son, the father said, You are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because the brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Let us pray as we prepare for the word this morning. Heavenly Father, Almighty God and King, we come before you, Lord. And what I pray, Lord, that as we unpack this word, Lord, that, Lord, you would just continue to speak to us, Lord. Minister to us, Lord. Open ears, open hearts, and open minds, Lord. I pray, O God, Lord, as we speak about prodigals, Lord. As we speak about messy church, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you would just continue to speak. Lord, your servant will decrease and you will increase. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So if you were watching on social media, we we did a, a little bit of a preview for where we're going with the message this morning. And I spoke about that the Hebrew word for mess is mess. Now I'm just messing with you. See what I did there? I'm messing with you. No, but the actual Hebrew word for mess is belagan. Belagan. And the scene of belagan, the mess of, you know, the, 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 the scene of the mess, 
can be referred to as Shazar style. Yo, that's like almost like Russian, not never mind Hebrew and everything. But that is the equivalent of the English term pigsty. Sure, eh? See where I'm going with this? Now, here's the amazing thing. I, I, thought I, I didn't want to bring our family into this, but I thought it's only equivalent that I do bring our family into this. Roxanne's already hiding away. But we had an awesome opportunity and privilege to have Roxanne's family, my father-in-law, my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, you know, um, and then our nephews to come through. And yo, you must understand the, 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 the situation right now. We, we're living in a home where it's just me and Roxanne. Then the whole family comes. And the nephews are, correct me if I'm wrong, they are five years and six months. So the five-year-old is running crazy. So he is just, you know, he's just throwing things and everything is just a, 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 a paper plane. And it's, a, you know, it's just, everything is a toy. You know, even the furniture is a toy. And you're just like, oh, hold on, hold on. And then the six-month-old is like, yo, he is just, you know, everything he just wants to eat. Eat the furniture, eat the couch. But, yo, all of a sudden, that house, I don't want to use the word pigsty, but it, yo, it's a mess. Like anybody that has children, you can testify to that, right? It's like, yo, do yourself a favor, do not buy Legos. Whatever your children promise, do not buy Legos. Because that's a, that's a minefield. Like you wake up in the morning and you're like, and then you, like the, 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 the six month old has got this little toy that, you know, you, you just, you don't even get close to it. And it makes the, the you know, those little, you know, songs and rhymes and stuff like that. Now imagine in the middle of the night you wanted to go to the toilet and you step on that thing and that thing starts. Puma, Satan. Puma. It's like, yo. But it's a mess. Yo, if you have to go to us now, and praise God, you're not going there now. But it's a mess. It's just the, the food is everywhere because, you know, the babies do not just keep food in their mouth. They keep it all over. I don't know they want to keep it for seconds for later, but it's all over. It's on the curtains. It's on the chairs. Everything except on the plate. But I'm sharing this because, you know, our house is a mess right now. And I don't know about your house, what your house looks like. But there's this other slogan, and it's not necessarily Hebrew or Greek. But there's a slogan that says, Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. And here's the thing about, and I want to set the scene for us this morning about this whole idea of messy home. Because God says to us, to each and every one of us, Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. And let me just paint this picture about when I talk about God's home. I'm not just talking about heaven. I'm speaking about the spiritual dynamic about home here. So let me just paint this picture for you. We proceed to drag our messiness inside this home. There is blood on the floor from the woman who crawled her way towards Jesus for healing. Similarly, there is blood on the carpet of people that after a week of battling addiction, grief, shame, failure, is trying to muscle just a little bit of strength to get close to Jesus. There are stains on the floor and the furniture from when people vomited their food because they were sick of abuse, sick of anger, or just plain down sick of life. In God's house, there are these fragments these indications of broken hearts and hurtful pains. And I know there was somebody in the, in the congregation who was speaking about somebody that, that they felt God was speaking to them about a broken heart. Yet this is God's house. Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. And he makes our messes his mess. Into the void of hopeless hearts, he speaks words of transformative life. To the entrance of his home stands the sign, Welcome home. He strips off the filthy rags of every prodigal, washes us with purest water, puts sandals on our feet, 
rings on our fingers, and robes bleached white in the blood of the Lamb. All this Jesus does filtered in the ordinary stuff of church that we often take for granted or unnoticed. Our praise and worship that brings us a rendered heart closer to God in the midst of a hard week lined with idols just waiting to pounce. Yet, my worship to the King, albeit not as glamorous and eloquent, starts to change the atmosphere around my mess. A warm handshake or a hug when prior to arriving through these doors, I felt unwanted and loved. Yet someone noticed me at the door and said, it's good to see you again. And guess what? They even called me by name. Baptisms that we just experienced now. Celebrating a decision that someone made in the midst of a family crisis regarding their beliefs. Now see, that makes me warm inside. To come out of that water to hear the cheers of our family, celebrating with them. But you see, sometimes we look at this and we say, there's nothing to write about home. Nothing really worthy of Instagram or Facebook. Yet God moves in and through these moments in his home. You see, here's the amazing thing about the God that I serve and the God that you serve. He is the God who isn't big into bells and whistles. He is the God who occupies crosses and vacates tombs. He is the God who labors among the people but far from the limelight. He is the God who works below the radar where only the ears that have been opened by the divine word see what he is up to. And let me just say this. We would be wise to see and recognize the little things in his home instead of looking for the big perfect moments in this home. It would be wise for us to see the little messes of dirty footprints at the entrance of the door, because it will direct you to the lounge chair where Jesus is busy washing our pig pen feet full of pig poop and mud. Yet he takes the time to clean every part of your feet, consoling us, that our mess is just temporary and we have nothing to fear about. He kisses away our fears when we have feelings of being used up and thrown away. When we were sold a lie that law and religion is the only way and what happens, it leaves us on the outside of that home. But I love the God that I serve and I love the God that you serve. He leaves the 99 inside of the home and he leaves and he comes outside and he go finds the one. He go finds you and me. And what I love about the God that I serve and the God that you serve, when he finds the one, he takes the one, he takes you, he takes me, he puts us on his shoulders and he smiles and he walks us into his home. When there is no words to say anything, when the brokenness mutes our mouths and we don't know what to say, He prays in us and for us. He teaches us how to cry, Abba, Father. All He does is in His church. Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. And you might be asking yourself, but how does this fit into messy church? And how does it fit in about being a volunteer to be a person that wants to serve when in his home, in his church, the bride of Christ? If you've got a pen and paper, write this down because this is important. Because he does all these things that I just shared as I painted this picture for us. The messiness of the home. He does all of this in this church, his church. Behind every visible vessel of man is the opportunity to see the invisible Lord at work among us. Every one of us have the opportunity to show who Jesus is. 
not just in-house, but out of this house, to welcome those who feel that they are unwelcomed, for those who have been thrown away, tossed away, for those who are hurt and broken, for the destitute, for the widow, for the poor, for those who feel unwanted and unworthy. Mi casa es su casa. My home is your home. The church doesn't need to be or have any beauty filters on it. She doesn't need membership at Virgin Active to be healthy. She doesn't need Botox. The church needs you, mess and all. The church needs you. Now just go with me again back to Luke 15. We're going to focus on verse 13 and 14 quickly. And it says, Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth and wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Now, the interesting part about it, if you do a little bit of research, and I inquire and ask you to do a little bit of research, not just to always just take Scripture out of context to fit it within what you want it to fit in, but to read it and to understand it and to take some nuggets out of this, because the English word for prodigal means wastefully extravagant. Wastefully extravagant. In the parable of the prodigal son, we read that he blown through his resources. There was no one to blame for his situation but himself. Not only had this young man dishonored his family and had gone into a sinful lifestyle, but he had wasted all of his resources that has been given to him. He had nothing left. Nothing. Here's what I know. And I want you to know this. God has given us talents and resources that are meant to be used at His direction for His glory and for our fulfillment. But when we choose the far-off country and when we direct our resources to be used how we want it to be used, they will be wasted rather than invested. God has given us, each and every one of us that make Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, gifts, spiritual gifts. To function in his body, to function in his home. And if we chose to go into a far off country to use the resources God has given you, not to use them but to waste them, then we're not edifying the body, we're not glorifying God, we look to self. And guess what? There's going to be a famine. I pray it never happens to you, but there's going to be a famine and we're going to be in need. But you need to be plugged in the home. Miss and all with your gifts and your talents. Luke fifteen seventeen says, When he came to his senses. For many of us, we either thought we had all that, we were all that. Like we were, we were you know, almost second best to chocolate. We didn't get the limelight. And what happens if we don't get the limelight? We stop serving. We stop serving the people and we stop serving the house. We in essence left the home to a far country or maybe you're on the other side of that coin. Maybe you're still in the pigsty, all filthy and ashamed because you wasted all the Father gave you. It's time to come back home. Why? Because there is food in the Father's house. There is lodging and shelter and relationship in my Father's house. Even if I have to go back as a servant of my Father instead of a son, I will be far better than what this far country has to offer me. He woke up to the fact that he had taken himself out of the best place for him. He didn't belong in that country. He belonged at home where there was provision. He belonged at home where there was grace. He belonged at home where there was relationship. Son and daughter of the Most High, it's time to come back 
home. Listen, when a prodigal son made the decision to come back home, he was making a decision for a comeback. A decision to start a comeback. I want to start a set the foundation for us here. Maybe I'm preaching to the crowd, and maybe you're already at home. Maybe you've made this your spiritual home. Maybe there's people online that need to still make a decision to make this their spiritual home. But I'm not just talking about coming and just being plugged in to sit on a chair. I'm talking about when I say come back home, I'm talking come back home with your gifts and your talents. Come back home with the resources that God has blessed you with. Don't just sit on the chair. Be a member of this family. Don't just waste the resources, but invest your resources. Mi caso is caso. My home is your home. You see, we need to fully understand this. As prodigals, not just that boy on the, on the, on the page of this Bible, but for each and every one of us, maybe we've wandered all far, far away. Maybe because of shame. Maybe because of hurt. Yo, there's so many people that I encounter that have got church hurts. And yes, I wish I could tell you that you know, sometimes church is a safe place where nobody will ever hurt you. But I have to lie. Because church hurts. People in the church will still hurt. But God is still God. And He still loves you. And He wants you to function and be able to be part of this family, regardless of what it looks like. Regardless of the mess. I started off by speaking about the pigsty, the messiness. Sometimes it's not messiness about the Lego toys, a slinky. A little musical toy that makes a a, a funny noise. Maybe the mess is something about hurt and brokenness. Maybe somebody even in this home has hurt you. Has promised you things and it never came through. And you're like, I want to just wander off and I just want to go into a far off country. I serve but I don't want to serve anymore. Don't allow the enemy to to teach you something. Allow God to speak into your life. Don't, Don't allow hurt to block you from the destiny that God has for you. Because oftentimes what happens is we have this hurt and we cannot move, we cannot progress. We cannot serve even. Because all we see and all we feel and all we experience is hurt. Someone once said, hurt people, hurt people. But this morning, I want to change that dynamic. Hurt people has a testimony to share. Hurt people has still got a destiny to go into. Hurt people still have a God that they love and a God that loves them. His people are people. Even when you come through these doors, there's going to be a mess. There's going to be brokenness, there's going to be hurt, there's going to be pain, there's still going to be sickness, but I pray the day comes when all those things will be wiped away clean. But this morning you have a decision to say, I'm going to be defined by my hurt, I'm going to be defined by my shame, I'm going to be defined by all those things that is wrong in my life and it's wrong with people in my life. Or I'm going to be defined by what God speaks into my life. Because guess what? As much as we look at the footprints of the mud going into the house, look back. I promise you something. You will see that your footprints are also a mess. So instead of pointing fingers about somebody else's mess in the house, start saying, how can I help clean up the mess? How can I be a servant in this house to help clean up some mess in this house? Because this is what family does. This is what family do. We clean up each other's mess. 
can I tell you, we would be an amazing church. We would be a good church, a loving church that cares for their needs, that cares for people's messes. Instead of just looking for a perfect church, start saying, where can I be the hands and feet of Jesus? That's church. Don't tell me that, don't give me that baloney and say, oh, pastor, I, 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 I don't have a gift. I don't know how to serve. No. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have a gift. Might be that you haven't discovered your gift, but it doesn't mean you don't have a gift. But we will give you the tools and the resources of how to explore that gift and to use that gift for His kingdom. If you say there's no place here to serve, well, then you don't know our church because there's always a place to serve here. We need you in the sections. We need you at the door. We need you at Kids Church. We need you in the parking lot. We need you at the lounge. We need you at the coffee stations. We need you. I cannot do this on my own. I need you. God needs you. I said to you, this is not my home. This is God's house. He needs you. So this morning, make the decision to come back home. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's sermon. If you need prayer or want more information about Sweetwaters Church, please email us at info at sweetwaterschurch.co.za. Until next week, be blessed and know that we are praying for you.